Hello everybody, thank you for checking this video and welcome to another WordPress Gutenberg tutorial. In this video, we're going to continue the work that we've been doing on the reward giveaway Gutenberg plugin. So up until now, we have a very simple structure where we can add a feature image, a text or a title, a description, and we have a call to action. And all of this was achieved by reusing existing core blocks through the built-in inner blocks component by using the templates or an array of templates. What we want to do now, we want to give the users the option to add as many social rows as they want with a link to their social media and maybe an action when they click to follow or leave a comment and stuff like that. If we look at an example of a finished product, we can see how I'm using this sort of similar plugin that I developed for my own website. And here, to the right, I have the option to enable specific social media if I want to ask the user to complete some specific actions. The way I built this was basically line by line. I created an attribute, I added a couple of fields, and I added a specific column or a, a specific icon. So each of these are static. You can only add one Twitter follow request, one ask for tweet, and one YouTube subscription. You cannot add anything to any other social media or even customize how this should behave. We want to do something a little bit more advanced for our users and we want to give them the ability to add as many social media outlets and as many social media links as they want and also customize how each row behaves and interacts. So let's take a look on how to do it. This episode is sponsored by Linode. Linode is the largest independent cloud computing provider which needs no introduction as it's been around since 2003. That was 18 years ago and at that time graphics card looked like this. They're independently owned and founded on a law for Linux, open source technologies and the community that surrounds them. Linode makes it easy to give your creations their own personal space on the internet. No matter what skill levels you're at or what technology stack you use, Linode can help your ideas come to life on the web. And it's not like AWS where you need a certificate only to figure out how they name things. Are you looking for a small server for your personal blog, portfolio or game server? Or your business is scaling fast and you're looking for an affordable and reliable solution to serve millions of visitors? Linode has you covered. Their extensive documentation is filled with guides and tutorials to help you get started. And if you run into any trouble, Linode comes with an amazing 24-7 customer support by phone or ticket for everyone. You don't need to be a Platinum member or whatever that means just to get help. Adopting a new service is sometimes scary and filled with uncertainty. That's why Linode is offering $100 60-day credit on your new account just to try it, with no strings attached. Sign up today at linode.com slash alicad or click the link in the description below. Linode. If it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode. So if we access our edit.js here, if you remember, we left this section here with a little comment where we wanted to add our custom blocks. And this is what we have to do. Basically, we need to create another block inside our current custom block, but this block will be only available as a child element of this parent block of our giveaway block. So it will not be usable by any other block or even the page itself. It will only be available within our own custom block and we can register a new block without the necessity of creating another plugin or rewriting some more PHP to extend our block registration. So let's do it. First of all, and this is totally up to you, I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna call it blocks. And in here, we can list in all the child blocks that we wanna add to this parent block. So let's create a new file. I'm gonna call this something like a social row.js. And then I'm going to create another file with, I'm going to call the social row block.json. If you've been following this tutorial, you know that the block.json file is what WordPress likes to use and Gutenberg likes to digest in order to have an overview, basically a blueprint of how our custom block behaves with its name, titles, text domain, and all editor script, editor style, and so on. So we need to basically create something similar like that, but way more streamlined. So 
in the social row blocks.json, we're going to open our curly brackets and we're going to write a bunch of attributes. So for the first one, we have the name and the name we're going to use basically the same exact namespace of our main block. So create block forward slash allocate giveaway, but we're going to change the end, of course, giveaway social row. And as usual, you can always name this thing however you want. You're not locked to follow my convention. You can name this with your own custom names of your custom plugins. There's not a problem at all. Then we need to define a title and the title, I want something simple like uh, social row. Then we need to define a category, even if this child block will not be available in any category and not be uh, available outside our parent block. Then we want to find an icon. Uh, in this case, let's do a smiley just for fun. Then we can write a small description. And in description, we will write something like add a social media row to the giveaway block, something like that very straightforward. Then we want to use the same text domain of the parent block of the main block. So it's alec add giveaway. But of course, if you use a different text domain, use that text domain. And as well, we want to define that this doesn't support HTML, we want to avoid to allow the user writing any HTML inside our block because we're going to have some text items and text fields. We don't want that to interfere with anything. The most important thing that we need to write in this JSON file is the parent tag. And the parent tag is basically what binds this other block to another block which will prevent the usage of this block outside our parent block and the parent tag needs to be wrapped around. It's basically an array because you can assign a child block to as many parents as you want, but we need to basically copy the uh, namespace of our parent block. Copy these, we paste it here. Perfect. Now we have this full JSON file here. Now let's access the JavaScript file and the JavaScript file is going to be pretty straightforward because for now I just want to show you an example on how to create a child block inside a pre-existing block and only use that inside that parent. So we're not going to do anything fancy. First of all, we need to export something that, that we can register. So we need to export an object with all our declarations like we are kind of doing in our edit. We are exporting the edit function or in the save, we're exporting the save function. And then in the index, we are using those save and edit as methods of our custom block. We need to do exactly the same for our new child block. So in this case, we're going to export a constant object, which we're going to call settings, but you can call this however you want. This is just basically we're declaring a variable so you can name it as you prefer. Inside here, we can declare just a bunch of stuff that we need to repeat. So the smiley icon, and then we need to declare an edit function that we're going to just write this way. And in the edit function, we're going to just return a div. And inside here, we can write something like child element. So we have a representation of what our child block will print in our page. And then we can basically duplicate this and change this meta to save. So we have exactly the same HTML printed in both edit and save. Now we need to import the metadata that we just created. So we created our block.json. We can do something very fancy in order to avoid to redeclare all the things that we already declare in the JSON file. If we check the index.js here of our parent block, here we're redeclaring a bunch of things like we're declaring the title, we're declaring the description, we're declaring the category, but all these things are already in our block. So instead of writing double it and repeating it, we can extract that metadata from the JSON and inject it in our registered block type method in JavaScript. So in order to do that, we can simply import the meta data from, and we need to define the location of our JSON file. And then we can export the metadata. If you don't know anything about JavaScript, 
This might sound a little bit confusing, but just to give you a quick overview, with JavaScript you have these import and export, and what they do is basically exactly what they say. With import, you're importing something from another file. In this case, we're importing the metadata from the JSON because JavaScript allows us to do this. With the export, you're exporting something that you declare in a file for other files to be able to import. So if I just declare a constant settings and then I go into another file and I try to do, for example, I'm in another file and I try to do import settings from this file, whatever it's called, these settings will not be available because I'm not exporting it. So if I do export, now the settings variable will be possible to be imported from other files. And here we're doing exactly the same. We're importing the metadata from in here and then we're exporting it. So we have both the settings and the metadata of the same block coming from the same social row.js file. Another thing that we can do is extract the name from the metadata. So we can define a constant variable called name, which it's coming from the metadata. So here basically we're doing a sort of an import or we are extracting from the metadata the name and we want to export the name the same way we are exporting the metadata and we're exporting the settings. Perfect. Now that we have these very simple settings here, object that kind of follows the same logic and the same structure of a Gutenberg block, we can import these settings and then we can declare a new Gutenberg block in the same index.js without changing anything in the PHP or other section of the JavaScript. So in here, we can create a comment that says something like um, child blocks. And here we can say import. And in this case, I need everything. I need the metadata. Oh, look at that. My autocomplete already kicked in automatically. Basically, I needed the metadata and my autocomplete, my prettier um, extension detected that I have a metadata declare in the blocks social row. But this is exactly what you have to write. But also, I want the name and I also want the settings. So now I'm importing inside my primary index.js where I declare the parent, the primary alicat Gutenberg giveaway block, I'm importing everything that I exported from the social row.js, which is the child block. Now that I have all the data that I need, I can call another time the register block type, but instead of doing what I did up here, which is redeclaring the name, opening an object and redeclaring the title, redeclaring the attributes, redeclaring the edit method, the save method, I just simply can pass the name, then spread function, the metadata, and then outside of it, I can print the settings. So the register block type will get the name, all the metadata spread it out because we want to explode all the information that we are getting from the JSON file as it was a simple object. And then we're passing all the settings inside of our social row. In our case, we're passing the icon, the edit and the save method. So we have this little thing. So if we save now and we do something like uh, npm start, everything is going to compile. We're not going to have any error. But if we access then our page, we refresh our page and let's delete these, remove block. We add once again, the alicad giveaway block. We have the image, the title and the description, but we don't have our new social row block that was created. We don't have anything here. That's because we didn't add it as a usable template inside this block. So let's remove this, let's update, let's go back to our code editor. One thing that we have to do in our edit.js here, where we are declaring the constant variable my template, which is a simple array with all the available templates that will be enabled inside our inner blocks. Do you remember we did this in the previous lesson? Here, instead of using the custom block for social media, we can declare 
our custom child block. And the name of the child block is what we declare in our JSON file. So in order to reference that, we just simply need to create block, alec add giveaway social row, or whatever name uh, title you decided to assign to that child block. If we check our compiler, everything is green. So if we refresh this page, now we add our alicad giveaway. Look what we got here, child element. And if we select it, of course it's just a text. There's nothing there because we didn't code anything, but we also have the smiley code here, the smiley icon. And this is perfect. So now we have the ability to register and create as many child blocks that are only available inside our giveaway because if we try to create a block and we look for social row or child there's nothing nothing comes up because these little child element which is called social row it's only available and you can see here in the footer actually let me go up the footer you can see down here document alicad giveaway social row this thing it's only available inside our main parent block, so nothing can be messed around. So in the next lesson, we're gonna start coding something funny here. We're gonna add some reusable component. We're gonna use the same logic of the template in order to get some text and some images for our social media and some URLs for links. And we're gonna convert this into a button once we save it for the front end. And we're gonna give the users the ability to add as many repeated social media child blocks into our main giveaway parent block. So that's pretty much it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And until the next one, as usual, happy coding.